Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming to my talk. Um, I'm Sina Madani. I'm a Java developer advocate at Vonage. Um, we do communication APIs. We have a booth, so come and check us out. Um, so as the Java developer advocate on our tooling team, I'm very interested in kind of API design and how to make good user experience for people using kind of libraries. So that kind of what, that's kind of what inspired this talk is uh, about checked exceptions and why you should avoid them. So before uh, we dive into that, um, just a reminder that exception handling is kind of um, a, a construct that many languages have. Um, that kind of is a special case of error handling, essentially, where you have a separate kind of block of code to handle errors and different languages do it differently. Um, but Java goes down the route of uh, kind of try catch. Um, so what is a checked exception in Java? Well, it's a, it's a compile time construct. That means that um, checked exceptions are exceptions that you must catch or propagate. You must handle them in your code. The compiler forces you to do it. If you do not handle it, then it's a compilation error. Um, so this is uh, distinct from unchecked exceptions, which are subclasses of runtime exception. Confusingly, runtime exception extends exception, but uh, the compiler makes a special case for that. So I want to, during this talk, really show you what they are and why checked exceptions are bad. So I'm going to um, walk you through uh, a demo. Um, so uh, let's imagine, uh, to demonstrate the difference, let's imagine I have an API and I have one method that kind of throws checked exceptions and one method that throws unchecked exceptions. So um, now I have an implementation of this API and I have a method that throws uh, checked, an exception called checked A, and I have one that is unchecked and it can throw an unchecked exception. Note that if I, I have to declare this, if I do not, it's going to say, well, the interface says you must throw it. So um, that's what you do. So what does that mean? That means that in your code, if you call that method, uh, you must handle this exception, right? So it says, well, uh, unhandled exception. So you either have to make it someone else's problem further down the road, or you have to make it your problem. And, and then you have to handle it here, right? And what you do with it depends on what the exception is, right? I mean, oftentimes you just that. But um, so well, by contrast, the unchecked one, I don't have to do this, right? I can just call this and oh, compile this happy. I mean, it's still, it's still throwing, but because this extends a runtime exception, it's fine, right? And so what's the problem with this? Well, uh, let's imagine that I wanted to evolve my API um, and say here, now I have a new exception. Uh, let's say checked B, if I can spell it. Uh, here we go, so I've created a new one. Uh, sorry, uh, let's say I created a base class now and now you must do this. And if I had my code here um, that was doing checked, now I must handle both of them. Um, yeah. Checked A, checked B. Right. And I must handle that as well. So I can handle it like this. Um, and you say, well, okay, uh, why, why is that a problem? Well, because if, uh, if you were to throw this, if you were throwing this, then uh, guess what? Now, whoever calls this code has to be able to handle both. So 
if uh, before you introduce the base class and you say, okay, I'm going to throw this, now they have to handle that instead. Whereas with the unchecked one, you don't have to do that, right? Um, so you say, well, uh, okay, but at least this is explicitly documenting what you have to handle, right? But I say not necessarily because let's imagine that you had uh, a file, okay? You wanted to write some text to a file. Then um, what can happen is, okay, yeah, what do you do? You get a path for the file you want to save it to, right? And you, uh, you, you might call files.write, which, okay, you give it the path, give it what you want to write, and um, of course that throws IO exception, which uh, is a checked exception, right? So why, uh, okay, so now you're throwing this, um, but did you know that one thing this method could throw is file already exists exception, right? Because if you cr do this with the option of create new, right? If, uh, if the file already exists, then it's going to throw this file already exists exception, which is a subclass of IO exception. But you can't know that because an IO exception could be thrown for any other reason. So actually, if you wanted to handle this, you would have to have a special case. So if I wanted to say, remove this, and I wanted to say, well, okay, I want to surround with try catch, then I, I can handle that, of course, I can do whatever here. But if I, if I say, okay, I want to handle a file already exists exception, the compiler's gonna complain, right? It's going to say, it's already been caught, so you have to put this earlier, right? So in which case, uh, what what you're not really getting much benefit from the checked exception because the subtype, as in file already exists exception, is shadowing the supertype. Similarly with this example, right, where I had checked A, checked B, if I had just said uh, throws base checked, like you wouldn't know what that's going to, whether it, when it's going to throw. So, so, so the best way to do it is to document it, right? And in fact, you can do that with unchecked exceptions. You can just say up throws and, you know, unchecked A if A goes wrong. And you could do that for B as well. And then it'd be in the documentation and someone can, can see that. So, Really, checked exceptions are forcing you to do extra work that you don't want to do. For example, let's imagine that I had some API that was fetching something by an ID, and then later on I introduced some schema for my ID that wanted to do some validation on it. And then if I said, okay, if, uh, if it's not uh, a valid ID, uh, then throw you uh, a checked exception, right? But then notice how if someone calls your API, let's say you had a previous version and now you're throwing this exception. Well, that's a breaking change because now they have to handle this exception. But hang on a minute. What if I didn't pass you an invalid ID? You've just made me do more work. It's like, for example, here, if I, if I had a, an API that needed to use a URI to do some something on the web, and uh, let's say internally, I was uh, creating this API and I was appending some ID to a URL, okay? Now, if I were to do, say, new URI, uh, notice how it's saying URI syntax exception. You could have given me an invalid URI. Well, I didn't. And, okay, and I make it the user's problem. And then the user has no control over this. So how can the user possibly be expected to deal with something that they had no control over whatsoever? Right, so you should never make it the, someone else's problem when it's an internal implementation detail that the user cannot handle. So the point is that why should you make it 
Like if, if I know, for example, in the in the saving example, if I know that the file might exist, why not do if files dot exists right beforehand? Like I should do the check before rather than expecting it to fail and then just having extra logic. Another reason why exceptions are bad is like you're trying to handle stuff in streams, right? Is um, just throw this here. Is if I if I wanted to use a because functional interfaces in Java they don't really handle that. So if you wanted to kind of have it in a lambda expression because most lambda expressions do not exp uh, have the exceptions, checked exceptions in the method signature, you end up having to write really ugly code, right? Like this, right? Whereas if I wanted to um, not throw this, it's going to work just, just fine. So I can just make the lambda a lot more concise. Uh, uh, and just be like a one-liner, right? So checked exceptions really just don't work so well. So going back to the uh, presentation, uh, uh, to summarize, they it's a breaking change. It exposes low-level details to other people um, that maybe not know what to do about it or they shouldn't know about it. And once you add other exceptions into the mix that are like super classes, then they kind of hide the more specific errors. Um, and then the functional interfaces, you know, that um, using uh, streams like uh, runnable supply consumer function, they don't have exceptions in the method signature. And uh, most of the time, like you can't really handle the exception. You don't really care about it anyway. Um, so if you like, if you know that something's going to go wrong, then you should, you know, put the catch block in there because you expect it to go wrong. But oftentimes, like you're being forced to handle an exception that sometimes can never even be thrown. And this is a problem with like code coverage. So sometimes you will have code that is catch exception and you cannot write any code that will cover that exception because it can never be thrown with the code that you write. You can put system.exit there and it'll, you'll be fine. Um, and you know, Java is like basically the only mainstream language that has this feature. And even the newer Java APIs, if you look at say the Java time API, that doesn't use, that, that has plenty of exceptions, but they're all runtime exceptions. Like for example, passing dates and incidents and all of that, and there's loads of things, but they don't force you to handle it. They don't, uh, say, Hey, you may have done something wrong. Um, and you must tell the compiler that, no, I haven't. Uh, so, um, and using exceptions for flow control is not really good practice anyway. Um, maybe you're controversial. So it begs the question why they're still a thing. Well, they're not, as I say, that, um, you know, like C sharp doesn't support them like Kotlin, and Scala, they, they don't have them. Um, and it, it, to me, uh, checked exceptions are kind of like a legacy feature that they're kind of, um, like, like Java serialization, they were a bit of a mistake. Um, so what I have to say is, uh, yeah, you should, um, you should just use runtime exceptions in your APIs. Uh, it's just better design. It's just cleaner design. Um, and yeah, so if you're designing an API with your own exceptions, you should always extend from runtime exception, not exception, and just explicitly document what exceptions your code is going to throw um, in 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 you know in your APIs in your code in the Java docs, um, and not force users to handle stuff that they can't handle anyway. Um, so yes, just a plug uh, for my company, um, saying me to do this talk. Uh, you should sign up for our. Excellent APIs, <laughs> and um, there's our contact links there. And you can get 10 euros credit um, if you sign up. Um, and you can enter a raffle to win our robot. Uh, come talk to us at our booth, at the Vonage booth, if you're interested in this topic or have further questions or discussions or opinions or you disagree. Um, but I think 
that's all I have time for. Uh, I hope this talk was useful. Um, yeah, I'm happy to take questions with one minute or 30 seconds left. Okay.